Hi everyone, it's Helen from SMB Deal Hunter. Today we have Brandon Williams with us, a former software engineer who bought a window covering business. Uh, I'm very excited to hear Brandon's story. It's Brandon, it's great to have you on today. Uh, thanks, I'm really excited to be here. And yeah, thank you for inviting me. Brandon, first tell us about your background. You know, what, how did you go from software engineer to, to an acquisition entrepreneur? <laughs> it, uh, it, I think just many hours in meetings and late nights writing code, uh, I finally got uh, tired of it. And, um, you know, I, I was looking for something a little different. Um, it, it really, uh, came down to, uh, just wanting to be able to move around, talk to people and, and not sit around all the time in a computer chair. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I probably spent the last five years of my software engineering career, um, periodically looking for businesses for sale, uh, something that would interest me that I could do. Um, and that would make a little money. Uh, my wife worked at the time, so I didn't need anything that made a lot of money, just something different. Um, I, I scoped out a uh, laundromat that was for sale. Um, and there was just, you know, a bunch of different things just didn't match up with what I wanted to do and, and everything. And there was a coffee shop, uh, in a tourist town, which was really neat, but, um, seemed like it would be a lot of work. It's really hard to keep employees in this yeah. area. So I didn't want to be too reliant on something like that. Um, and then finally, uh, I saw this, uh, this blind shop for sale. Uh, the uh, person that owned it, she was in her 80s. Um, and uh, her daughter and son-in-law were helping run it in their 60s and 70s. Um, and so they were definitely ready to retire. They were tired of getting, tired of getting on ladders um, and they were, they were ready to move on. So I reached out and we started talking about it and, uh, I felt it was a really good match. And how long ago was this, by the way? Uh, two years ago. Okay. Amazing. So I guess after the, I guess the five years of, I guess, just browsing, looking for businesses for sale online, what made you decide to, I guess, pull the trigger on this one? Was it really just meeting the seller, having those conversations? Um, was, you know, something else that happened? Curious. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely did my fair amount of research, uh, you know, and I, I didn't, other than having blinds in a house, I didn't really know a lot about the, about the business. So, um, you know, reviewing their numbers, uh, getting a better idea of the industry, um, kind of scoping out competition in the area, and um, then just kind of a risk analysis, like, uh, you know, how what am I going in for? What kind of deal are we structuring? Um, how much am I putting myself at risk? You know, like the the laundromat, when I looked at it, um, I was going to have to buy tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of new equipment. It was all really old, barely running. Um, and that was seems like high risk to me because now I have like all this, I, I you know, if the if the business fails, I can only wash so many of my own shirts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i felt uh i felt everything was in line and i was like i know i won't totally fail at this like and worst case scenario i'll be able to aff afford a new mountain bike um you know <laughs> and some running shoes and and that's good enough for me um so yeah i went for it and what um i guess curious what do you like about the the window bl the blinds business i guess window covering business um, yeah. I mean, once yeah. you start digging in, I guess, in your diligence or speaking to the owners, what, you know, what did you like about the business? Um, I think at that time, I liked that I wasn't just going to sit on a computer all day. <laughs> like, that was the main thing. I was trying something different, putting myself out, out there. Um, but, you know, I had remodeled a condo uh, myself and done like light work like that. And I felt like that was something I could definitely do. I couldn't do flooring all day. Like I, I you know, I, I couldn't handle being on my hands and knees. But, um, you know, I, I, I like moving around. I like doing stuff like talking to people and uh, in person, you know, it <laughs> really... Uh, it really felt like a good match, just all those little things, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. and did the, the, the business come with any existing customers? Like were people just coming directly to you? Like how, how are people finding out about the business? Yeah. I mean, that was the best part. I mean, you think about starting your own business and the risk involved. I mean, I've seen businesses fell left, fell left and right with, um, you know, just not be able to get the word out or not people not knowing they're there. Um, you know, the business was, they were around for 30, 32 years before I took over. And um, there's 
probably at least 10 to 15 years of customer files and they'll come and add shades or something. But the reality of it is um, the, the, what really made it worth it was just getting the phone number and the website, like the URL, like everything else. I mean, I picked up a profitable business just by answering the phone. All I had to do was answer the phone. I don't do any advertising. I don't do anything else. And I am more than busy. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I mean, that's, that, that truly, <laughs> that is the best, uh, that is the best part. And are people finding out about the business just from its, I guess, I guess word of mouth, just like presence on the internet. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of word of mouth. So um, there's definitely, you know, because they were kind of ready to retire, there was definitely like a, a lot of not calling back um, that <laughs> was happening. And my first year, my first full year uh, in business, I almost doubled their best year. Um, and it was just by doing callbacks and, uh, you know, I, I talked to realtors like, oh, I thought they were out of business. They never called me back. And, you know, so like the first six months of me just calling people back and talking to realtors and um, builders and construction people and, um, you know, the word of mouth just blew up, you know. Yeah. So I would say that's the biggest thing is having a, you know, you have some search results because it's been there for so long, but then people knowing that I'm there, that I'm responding and that, you know, I'm doing good work. So that's crazy because I, I hear this a lot from folks that run local businesses or they're just like, our differentiator is we pick up the phone. And I feel like it's, it's very true in this case, it seems. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and showing up on time. I mean, the, it's, it's hard to get anybody a uh, contractor or anything to, I mean, they're, they're all busy. It's a small area. Um, and uh, so I get it. But at the same time, you know, if I'm late, I'm texting them, hey, I'm running late. So I have really solid communication skills and um, people are amazed. They're like, I cannot believe you're here when you said you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so that word of mouth just piles up every time I show up on time, every time I communicate, you know, it's it's really That's powerful. Crazy. And how much of the business, I guess, even before you took took over was, you know, from realtors construct like other sort of construction or builders versus just, you know, customers calling you guys directly? Yeah. I mean, I'd say it's uh, probably not, probably 90% customers calling us directly, um, especially in the beginning. I have uh, established a couple of solid relationships where I'll have realtors uh, refer me, which is working out really nice. And then I have uh, one high-end builder that when they finish the house, they'll uh, refer me, which is really nice. I'm like, need to take them out to lunch or something. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's yeah. amazing. And, oh, that's the, and is there a lot of repeat? I mean, it seems like, you know, when you bought all these, basically when you got all this customer data, um, do people come back and sort of order more shades periodically? How does that work? Is there much replacement yeah. to, to shades? Yeah. So uh, there's like a bunch of different scenarios. Like sometimes it's just because they sold a house and moved into a new one, which of uh, course is great to get repeat business there. Um, I've had some people that just own multiple houses in the county. So um, it's just kind of an investment thing or a family thing, like, you know, brothers and sisters and cousins all own houses. So I kind of make the way around, but uh, yeah, some people, you know, they, they only want shades on specific windows and then they'll come back and be like, you know what? You were right. The sun is just way too bright. <laughs> and we need something in this in these rooms too. And so, I mean, I, I've definitely had houses, especially the larger houses where I do it in four different, you know, four different sets of uh, going back. And I can totally see that because we just bought a house and I'm like, oh, shades are so expensive. Let's just do the primary <laughs> bedroom. Well, let's wait on this random guest room. Um, yeah. but I, I could definitely see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's interesting. When you were buying a business, did you, how did you think of like how big of a business you were looking for? Did you, was it just like something that replaced your nine to five? Um, I mean, yeah. how did you, how did you sort of figure that out? Um, mostly I think, I, you know, a lot of it was, I wanted something that I didn't feel was going to be too demanding. Cause I was like, as long as I can make some money, uh, you know, my wife was working at the time. Um, I was like, I don't need have, I don't need to make a lot. Like I don't need to pay for everything myself. I just need to help and pay for the expenses of the business. So I wasn't looking for anything too crazy. Um, but, uh, it definitely, I mean, so just to kind of add context to that, she left her job, 
last uh, spring of 2023 and just helps me. You know, that's fantastic. Like, yeah, like, like that's how much the business blew up, um, which is kind of crazy. Like it's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. I tell people I was like, I thought I was getting a hobby, <laughs> and, now, and now I have like this big thing. So. Um, I'm sorry, I kind of got lost in my uh, talking what the exact question was. No, no, no. Just in terms of figuring out like what size of business you were. Oh, yeah. Buy. Yeah. I mean, I think um, especially where I live. So, you know, it's kind of a touristy uh, community in the mountains and, uh, uh, you know, cost of living is really high. It's really hard to maintain employees up here, uh, just finding them a place to live um and and stuff like that so as far as size of business i definitely wanted something that i could kind of keep in the family i do have a guy that i use as a contractor to help us installs every once in a while but for the most part like uh you know there's that that kind of weird balance between making sure you're profitable but then growing so much that you need full-time employees and it just changes the dynamics of the entire business so i i definitely at least in the beginning wanted to avoid taking that step. Like I wanted something I can do. I, I have teenagers that help me on jobs, uh, which is great. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's kind of like the, the size I was looking for something. I didn't have to have a large employment roster. Got it. And what does the team look like now? Are you still doing the one, you know, fulfilling the jobs? Do you now, are other people now doing that or what does that look like? Uh, so I pretty much do all the sales uh, and most of the installs. Uh, my wife will, we have a showroom, so she'll work the showroom. And when people come in or call, uh, you know, she'll, she'll, uh, you know, deal with them and schedule thing and help me with the schedule and books and everything else. Uh, and then, uh, you know, my teenagers will go with me on jobs and help with the installs and everything. I do. I have one guy that I can contract out for, uh, especially for some of the bigger jobs. Um, and especially in the summer, I get so busy that I just can't do it all and I end up working like seven days a week so it's nice to be able to pass off some jobs I found a guy that's really good experienced and I mean I'll have customers call me after he does their installs and they're like oh he was great and I'm like well that's how you know you have a keeper <laughs> so that's that's fantastic and I guess going back sorry for jumping back and forth but going back to you know when you were looking at buying the business how did you how did you structure the deal with the the sellers and how did you finance the the, I yeah. guess the actual transaction no that's that's a great question it was something um it was uh, uh kind of an interesting back and forth like i was very opposed to risk you know they wanted um they wanted uh to do loan uh, or seller financing uh with a set loan term and and things like that and you know just not really knowing what i was getting into i was very concerned that the business would fail. Like I, like I, you know, I was paranoid. I'm like, yes, they've been doing it for a long time, but I'm going to get into this and there's just going to be nothing. And then I'm going to owe them this fixed amount every month. And it, it just felt like really daunting to potentially take on that type of risk. Um, so what I suggested, which I later found out was called an earnout, apparently, was uh, that we do a percentage of sales. Uh, and, and, and uh, so, yeah, so, uh, every month I sell X amount, they get that percentage. And, uh, um, and, and then there's just limits, like how many years or total amount and stuff like that. Oh, that's, that's really smart. Did you have to put anything down in addition to that or just started day one, just percent? Of uh, no, I, I, I put an initial 50 K down. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. That's, um, it's, I feel like it's not super common to, to get, to be able to get so creative. Did you work with, did you find the deal through a broker? How did you, how did you meet the? the yeah, sellers? they had it, they had it listed on uh, some, I can't remember which one it was like biz for sale type site. And uh, the, they had a broker that had it listed. So my initial communications were with him and then uh, put me in touch with the, uh, the owners, the, the owner family. And, uh, and then I went and visited and talked to him. It's great. And no, I mean, that's great that you were able to negotiate like basically something like an earnout. So yeah, um, that's, that's great. And what did the, um, what did you do during diligence? Like, how did you, how did you get comfortable with the, with the deal? Um, I mean, a lot of it was kind of like ask. So I, I actually contacted builders and I asked them, 
um, what they thought about the industry and, and if, uh, you know, if these services were needed and, uh, and basically everybody I talked to, like, we need more people that do that. You know, <laughs> it was just, uh, that, that it was a pretty solidified answer across everybody I talked to. Um, I did research on pricing. Like I looked up the vendors that they were using at the time and, uh, had them show me how to price things and understand margins and profits and loss and all that stuff. And then, kind of like try to figure out who I thought the competition was and who am I competing with. And, um, and uh, of course, some of that I was incorrect on who I'm competing with. Like I looked up like prices for like Home Depot type stuff. Like, wow, that's, it's a lot, it's more expensive than Home Depot. But of course, now that I've been in the industry, I'm like, well, yeah, there's a reason it's more expensive than Home Depot. But <laughs> so um, yeah, just lots of like anything I could think of, like to second guess myself, I try to eliminate those, <laughs> those second guesses. No, that that's super smart. How long did it take you to to diligence the deal and to like go through this whole process? I guess from like I guess when you found the business to when you actually closed. Uh, I probably spent like three months, um, kind of working on it. Which uh, I might have like tried to push that a little bit faster, but it just so happened I had a I had a, a injury on my hip, so I was on crutches when I started talking to them, and <laughs> um, so I couldn't do it faster, so, which was nice because I like had to go slow. I had no choice, but to say I have three months before I can even do this. So, you know, I spent that three months making sure I wasn't crazy. <laughs> Got it. No, that, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I guess, did you, did you have the thinking that eventually, you know, you were going to maybe just do sales and get back to, to an office job or did you, do you like doing the installs and, you know, you think you're going to continue doing them sort of. I think I saw that on X or Twitter, whatever it's called now. Um, you said you were looking at, you know, buying another business. Uh, what oh, sort yeah. of what, what was the original, yeah. I guess, intention, and you know, where are you at now in terms of <laughs> thinking about like your role in the business as it continues to to grow and and explode? It sounds like. Right. Right. Uh, you know, I I definitely would like to get to a point where I don't do installs. I mean, I don't mind doing them. Um, I just think that as a business owner, as a salesperson, which when I check, like I, it took me a long time, a, a little tangent here. It took me a long time to figure out what is my role? Like, am I a window covering person? Am I an installer? Am I this, that? And in at the end of the day, after doing this for a while, I realized I am a salesperson. I make money off of sales, not repairs, not installs, not, I can contract all that out. I can have somebody else do it. The sales are what drives my business, what grows my business. And that's what I, and then what I'm good at. And that's what I need to spend my time doing. So I don't know quite what I planned my role to be in initially, but I know my role right now is sales. And um, I definitely do not want to do installs permanently. Um, the person I have helped me every once in a while, he doesn't really live in the area. Otherwise, I would probably have him do even more of the installs. Um, right now, I'm kind of waiting to see uh, what some of my teenagers do post high school. And, you know, if they want in, I'm like, you guys do the installs. You're, you know, you're young enough. You can climb on the ladders. I'll just do the sales. So, um, you know, that that some type of uh, uh, that kind of scenario where I don't have to do them for much longer, maybe four or five more years. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's great that you have kids that could potentially help. Yeah. 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 Too. yeah. And, it, you know, it's, um, I try to be mindful, like, uh, you know, what they want to do with themselves. Like I have one that, uh, you know, wants to go play soccer and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I know she's not gonna, <laughs> she doesn't want to do it. She wants to go explore and, and do her own thing. But then I have another that, uh, you know, they're like, why do I need to go to high school? I can work for you. And I'm like, no, you're in <laughs> high school and doing something after that, then you can work for me. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, the other, the other business, you know, I, I always debate, like, again, it comes down to that employee thing, but like expanding, um, there is the potential that I could buy another business that's in the same industry. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because it's kind of like in the uh, you know, up in the air, but in the same industry, and it would uh, it'd be mostly retail. And um, I would definitely need employees at that point. Um, but it, it's an interesting offer. Like it's an interesting uh, potential to, to be able to. I mean, I would definitely not be in, doing installs. It would just be sales of both. Um, you know, both different products both products and 
relying on other people to do the installs and the and uh, all the other stuff. Yeah, but, sounds like there's some some opportunities with other sort of more I, I guess synergistic businesses that yeah. you could buy. So that's that's great. Of um, course, my my dream on another business is an ice cream shop. <laughs> There's an ice cream shop in a tourist town nearby. And I, I've, I told the owner like three times, I'm like, I will buy when you're ready to sell because it's just open during the summer and they just sell uh chocolate and scoop ice cream. I have a daughter that worked there for summer jobs. And I'm like, that is so cool. And so simple. <laughs> you know? I love that. Um, well, let me know if, uh, if that comes to fruition a few years from now, that's, that's very exciting. I, I actually interviewed someone who bought an ice cream shop in Arizona a couple of months back. So um, no, that's exciting. I guess with the current business, do you still see a lot of, you know, it sounds like you guys, first year you took over, you said you kind of doubled the business, right? What is that? Do you still see some opportunity for growth? Um, mm -hmm. What are you sort of focused on now? You said, you know, you guys don't really need to do marketing. Is, is that sort of next or what, what are you guys or are you just kind of happy with the status quo it sounded like you wanted something that would bring you good work-life balance too yeah um i i think i will continue to like try to get some growth uh i mean we're experiencing growth this year over last year you know it's it's Amazing. definitely continuing i think a lot of that is word of mouth um i would like to continue to grow i just um uh, I need to find stable help, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I can only put so much on, excuse me, only put so much on myself. So I think it really comes down to, um, you know, to, to getting that, like feeling like I have somebody I can rely on regularly to either do it. Like if I had somebody that did all the installs right now, I could, I could focus on growth and I, I know I could grow the business 20% in the next year, like yeah. easy easy and that that would just be putting the smallest amount of effort in advertising and, and partnerships uh, you know? <laughs> but you need that person right <laughs> like you need yeah. that so yeah. no definitely hiring can always be a huge challenge we've definitely seen that um I guess going back to kind of when you took over the business what was that like um like how long were the, were the sellers around for a while how was the transition how long did it take yeah. you to actually learn the business yeah, it was uh, a, definitely a lot of trial and error. I mean, the, we had this, the deal we structured was for one month, I would get like kind of on in the field training. Um, we would go to appointments together. So they led the first couple and then handed it over. And then I took over and, and uh, we didn't do a whole lot of them, but there was definitely enough for me to kind of get a feel for what was going on there. Um, and keeping in mind, I knew nothing. Like, you know, <laughs> so they were showing me how to measure, how to install, how to, um, you know, what the what the products were. I, I, I definitely went in blind. It was scary. I'm, I, you know, it was it was a big leap of faith that, but you know, I had faith that I could figure it out. Like, you know, how hard can it be if you just try and spend the time? Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, there was that month, and then. We also had an agreement that I could call them uh, a reasonable amount to ask questions and figure out history and stuff like that. And um, which they're happy to do. They're getting earnout money. Like, yeah. you know, like they want me to succeed. And that was the other part, uh, the other reason I liked the earnout as opposed to a structured set, you know, financing from the, the, the seller was that my success dictated how much money they get. Um, so they want me to be successful, you know, they can't, uh, just run away and say, whatever sucker. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, no, totally, totally. I mean, they're totally aligned with you. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess at, at what point did it go from, you know, this being totally scary, totally new to you, to you feeling like you're comfortable sort of running the show and, and. I, I would say three months. I would say three months because, you know, the first, the first couple of weeks, you're just doing sales. You're not doing installs. And then uh, it usually takes like three weeks for things to start coming in. And now all of a sudden, you know, month two starting and now you're doing installs and, and it's kind of like, oh, wow, now there's this other and you're trying to figure it all out. So three months in, you've, you've done enough installs, you've done enough sales that you, you're starting to learn from mistakes and, and figure out like, you know, uh, just, just a small example. Um, I would send out a proposal and people would be like, well, how much does the install cost? Well, the install is free with purchase. So there's a small lesson. Okay. Now on all your proposals, you need to put 
measure and installs free, you know, like, so that's real big on everything, right? So all those little, little tiny things, I say three months in, you start kind of nailing them down, six months in, you're golden. And uh, I would say between six and nine months is when I realized I was kind of getting that uh, excitement, you know, like that, uh, you know, sweet sales, I'm happy, Yay. you know, you're picking materials with people and you're, you're really getting excited about doing it. Um, and at what point did your wife leave her job and start working with you as well? Um, so I, we were probably nine months into the business. Uh, wow. Yeah. So six, six months in, I was just going crazy because I was trying to keep shop hours. I was trying to do everything. I, I was just going crazy with it. And, um, you know, she wasn't exactly excited about her field, uh, you know, her nine to five. Um, and, uh, I was like, why, you know, I, I either need to hire someone or you just quit and you can help me and work part-time basically. And, yeah. uh, that was another, uh, after just nine months, just after my little leap of faith, now we have another huge leap of faith. Like this is going to work out. This is going to, we're going to make this work. And, uh, yeah, we went for it. It's been great. That's awesome. What is the dynamic like working with your with your wife? <laughs> I laugh because uh, several people, uh, you know, in the in the server or the you know construction and and uh, other types of services. When I told them my wife's going to come work with me, they would just like look at me with a straight face and say, "Good luck with that." <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's actually been really good. I mean, um, I, I'd say we have a better balance together because you know in the past we both had full-time plus jobs where jobs with lots of responsibility and uh so it was kind of hard to balance that with home life um to where now i'm like look i'm gonna do most of the work i just need you to help you know 12 15 maybe 20 hours on a busy week and then you know pick up the kids from school do that stuff i'll be home when i'm done you know like yeah. so it, it feels like we're able to kind of more sync our home life and work life to balance each other out better. And, uh, you know, and then at the same time, if I'm like, okay, I need a break this week, I'm going to go camping. She'll come take over at the shop. She takes the phone. I, I, I shut down for three days and just go do my thing. Right. So, um, I feel like it's really well balanced. That's no, that's great to hear. That's, that's amazing. Um, I'm curious, I guess with, um, I guess now that you've sort of, you mentioned sort of six, nine months in, you know, your wife came in, were you still working as a software engineer for a period of time? Like how did that transition work for you? Or like, when did you just cut the, just cut the tie completely? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, no, I definitely was not still working. I, uh, um, I was so over doing it all in, in my last, in my last job, I actually, uh, I uh, got into a, a, a crypto related position, which um, being burned out on software and then getting in uh, crypto with uh, people that are a little fanatical, just, I was just so over everything <laughs> and not to say anything in crypto, whatever. It's just, um, if you're already kind of tired of the work that didn't help, that's, yeah. I guess, that's my point. Um, but uh, yeah, so I actually, uh, stopped working about a month before I took over the business. Um, I like everything was in place. Again, I was on crutches, so I couldn't start yet. So about, a, I, I turned in my notice and about a month before I was done, I was out. And uh, yeah, and so I had time to kind of relax, make sure I had everything figured out and set up. And then, you know, when it was time, I was barely off crutches. <laughs> wow, uh, crazy. Well, yeah. and then you went into doing installs and going on ladders, I guess, right? Yeah. So. Well, but, yeah, well, I had that couple of weeks before my first product started coming in, but so that helped, you know, yeah. but I was doing appointments right away. That's crazy. Um, anything that was kind of unexpected about the business, whether it's, you know, when you took over or just in general about buying a business? Um, I think um, understanding the different brands and products and what the difference is that there was more to it than I thought. Um, there was definitely a lot of maintenance slash repair slash warranty stuff that um, I wasn't expecting to have to deal with. 
Um, it's definitely my least favorite thing, but there was also a backlog of it. You know, like I say, in these retired oh, right. uh, people, they weren't answering calls on people that they service issues. Yeah, yeah, they're their customers. So I'd say that's that's the probably the thing I missed on the most is um I talking to someone, I can't remember who it was, but I talked to someone else that bought a business. Um probably you know a year after i i took over this one and they're like yeah that's that's why you um have in your structure that for the first year they deal with the warranty issues from their cus like they they deal with the warranty mm. issues and i have mixed feelings about that like because then you're operating under that same business name you're relying on how they handle that warranty issue to you know, I could get a Google review based on them handling it poorly. So I don't necessarily like that, but it's definitely something to consider. Like you need to consider who's going to handle the warranty issues. How are they going to be taken care of? Or if I'm handling an issue from them, um, am I getting compensated out of the earnout? Like, you, like there just should be a little bit more thought into that. Um, it wasn't a deal breaker. It wasn't that bad. It was just uh, mildly frustrating at times because I didn't see it coming. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, I, that, that's an interesting sort of little, I guess, a point that I, I wouldn't have thought of, but that, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Um, I guess, are you overall happy that, you know, with the decision you made to get into, you know, buying a business or how do you feel about it now that you're sort of two years post-close? I, I, I wish I would have figured it out 20 years earlier. Uh, I, I think it's great. I mean, it's... Uh, you know, as, as a software engineer, I think you get it like, you know, software engineering is so popular for so long and everybody's work from home and, and, you know, that van life, you know, and everything else you can do with software engineering and, um, which it was great at times and definitely great for a while. I, uh, I, I definitely think that, uh, being an entrepreneur, owning a business, kind of controlling your destiny is, uh, is pretty amazing. And uh, I'm glad I figured it out. I just wish I would have done it sooner. No, I'm glad to hear it. I guess, um, I guess last question for today, Brandon, any sort of final words of wisdom, especially for those first time business buyers who are going to be listening to this? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you definitely do your due diligence. You definitely need to kind of do a market analysis. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, find help, get somebody to help you look at things and figure out where things are. Um, like I said, I asked a bunch of people in the industry what they thought and got feedback, basically started developing those partnerships before I even started, you know, took over the business myself. But in the end, nothing you do is going to make you feel a hundred percent like you're doing the right thing. So you just got to jump in and trust in yourself and your own ability and your own uh, drive to make it happen. That's a, that's great advice, Brandon. And I guess I kind of lied. What is the, my final question is if people want to reach out after, you know, listening to this, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Is it Twitter X email? What's, what do you prefer? Uh, yeah, I mean, email or uh, uh, X is fine. Um, I, I think you mentioned my private messages were closed, but I can open those. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, email is fine too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate your time today, uh, Brandon. This is great and really, um, really great hearing your story. Um, love that, you know, there, I feel like a lot of people are looking to leave tech and buy a business. So this is I'm sure going to be very inspiring for a lot of folks out there. Yeah. Thank you.